G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, a while back I did a video on this little flame liquor engine I got from Banggood for appraisal. And <laughs> it took me quite a while to get this little sucker going, but eventually I did, and it, yeah, it ran okay. Anyway, it's a pretty looking thing, and some areas are well made, and some could be better. But a couple of things I want to do to this to actually get it running better. Uh, the first thing I'm not happy about is the run out in the flywheel. Look at that. I mean, that could be a lot better. And what I thought was a, a spring down in there are just spacer washers. And the spacer washer this side is just floating around doing absolutely nothing. And this arm comes in close to the journal here, to the uh, counterbalance weight so I think it could be aligned a bit better but the main thing I want to do first off is square up that flywheel which is pretty abysmal and then later on I want to do something about the little pot here for the metho the wick is actually too high. I think that wick should be lower down. Somebody else pointed that out and said that wick looks like it's too high. The flame is all coming up here. The whole pot, I think, should be sitting down here. And the pot should be bigger because it just doesn't last very long. It only runs for about four minutes, five minutes maximum. And also, the pot doesn't have a spout on it. It's just a hole. And what happens is the flame heats up the lid and it boils the metho and then the metho spills out, expands and spills out and you finish up with a flare up. So that whole pot, a new pot needs to be made completely, I think, to do it properly. I mean you could move that one and mount it down there and put a spout on it, but you know, it's still not big enough. So anyway, yeah, they're the things I want to do to it and then hopefully when the flame's down lower, I think it should run better. I think that, you know, as was pointed out by a a guy who was a lot more experienced in flame liquors than me, uh, by all accounts, yeah, that flame should be down more. It makes a lot of sense. I, I, I think he's right. So, okay, well, the first thing is going to be to dismantle this, take the flywheel out, and I'm going to have a look at it, and I'll probably have to bore it out, bush it, and then re-bore it all square on the lathe. So we'll get into it. I suppose the first thing is to disconnect the, the crank pin. Now these are all 3mm Allen headed bolts, which is really good. And uh, oh, there's a little washer there. Whoops! That made a bit of a, bit of a getaway. Oh, there's a little... Oh, I see. It's got a little floating... So it's a normal bolt with this little sleeve on it, so the thread doesn't chew out the uh, the end of the crank conrod. All right. All right. Well, we'll put these bits in there. Vegemite lid. You've got to have a Vegemite lid. Now we've done that. Well, now we can. Pull this apart. So probably the best thing would be to take the take the individual bearing holders off the off the base. Once again, this is where Allen headed Allen wrenches and Allen headed bolts are great. You can come in, you've got no clearance issues. You can use a ball headed um, key on them to come over an angle if you have to. They're a great idea. They're really good. Pretty easy. I mean, you don't use them all headed in to break them free, of course, or pull them up tight. You always do that with the, the other end, which is just plain, otherwise you could snap the little ball off, but um, undoing them, yeah, it makes it easy. I mean, you know, the thing is quite nicely made, it's just they didn't get that 
triangle square. It's got a, a little key in it. Uh, uh, it's got a little grub screw in it. So once again, it's out on it's uh, out on type. So, Oh, hang on. No, oh, those bolts go right through and they've got nuts on the bottom. Ha! <laughs> so this has all got to come off as well. I uh, see. I'll have to, otherwise I'll never get them back on again. So I'm going to have to take the whole base off. Alright, we'll do that. You might. This is why Australians eat Vegemite. It's not actually because they like it. It's they need the lids to put all their model making parts in. I mean, it's common sense. It's the same as the reason they drink a lot of beer is because you know it, that's the only way they can get uh, refunds on the bottles to take them down the recycling depot. You've got to make these sacrifices if you live in Australia. You know. Okay, so now we've got to the, the guts of the matter. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, well, that comes off nicely. I like the way they did these bearings, just slip the, uh, the housing and just press the bearings. That's a good idea. So it sort of just grips it, you know, obviously the machine the hole just slightly undersized, slid it and then it's, it's spring-loaded grip. Really good, I like that, that's clever. Okay, now this side. So there's a little... Little Alan Cool, gee, have I got one that small? I'll have to go to my other tin of specialty bits and pieces for that one. Maybe that's what those those little Allen keys were for. I mean, that's probably the only thing that they that came with it. Maybe that's the only thing that they will fit. <laughs> they do fit that. There you go. So look at that. I mean, you can always never have enough Allen keys because you know you get all these different sizes. So the good thing about this is there's no cam timing to worry about. So you can just pull it apart, and that's actually not. Where are we? I'll leave it in for now. That's not, alumin that's not brass, that's aluminium. It's too light for brass, so these parts are aluminium uh, coated. There's a little spacer. Hmm, now we get a, another lid. Those bits. Hmm, that's a bit burr on the end there. I have to push it off the other way. We'll deburr it. And there's uh, three spaces in there. So, whoops. Okay. What size is that? Uh, that's right. So those keys do actually do something. Ah, here we go. She's off. Now that's heavy. That is, I would say that's brass, definitely. But the rest of it's aluminium. Aluminium, as our American friends like to say. Right. Now that will then push out, hopefully. Through this way. Oh, come on. There you go. 
So I'll dress that end up as well um, when I do this because that's not very well finished. Both ends are a bit ordinary, so I'll, I'll uh, run the pencil die grinder over those with a little friction disc, and that will and that will do the job. So what have I done here? Oh, look at this. Yeah. It all looks good, it's just that I've uh, I've done a lousy job of uh, squaring it up. Hmm. So yeah, what we'll have to do is we'll have to machine it out a bit and push it. Probably I'll just lock tight it in rather than, I mean I could silver solder it in but I think this is a very low load so I think I'll just drill it out, lock tight in a bush and then uh, re-drill it and uh, do it that way. Alright, let's see what, uh, what size that shaft is. We'll, we'll use our new butte new Banggood digital micrometer. See how small it is. This is actually a really nice little unit. This. It's, uh, so it's six mil. 5.987. Near as damn it to 6 mil. 5.988. This is so easy to read. I mean, it's really good. I, I, I really like this. And I mean, you know. Yeah, it's certainly a lot easier and quicker to read than the old one, which is just um, the vernier scale. I mean, you can read these in vernier calibrations as well, but yeah, so it's 6 mil basically. So. Now, let me think. My boring bars. Oh dear. Those Banggood ones I got only go down to 7mm, I think, from memory. So I think I've got a high speed steel one that will go in there and, and do that. I mean, yeah, okay. We'll have to see how we go with that. No, I'll take this pot off while I'm at it, too. What have I got? Small spinner sizes. That'll do. So yeah, in fact I think I might actually mount this, remount this completely on something else. Yeah, it needs a new pot. I don't, that pot's useless, really. And I mean, if you look at the... I said about that pot, what happens is the, the metho boils because it hasn't got a spout to keep the flame away from the top of the lid. And you can see on here where it's actually had a flare-up and it's... it's mark the, the plastic, partly melted it, that's not good. So what I might do is actually put it on a wooden base and I might actually ditch this whole aluminium um, support idea, I might actually raise the whole thing up on some, lift the columns up, uh, turn up some brass ones of these to get it up even higher and maybe put it on a wooden base, so yeah. Yeah, plenty of room to improve this little thing. The actual f piston fit is nice, just really good. Let's close the port. Can we close it and... No, no, we can't without messing with the, with the adjustment. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm babbling, yeah. Yeah, so all good, so... Yeah, it's getting warm today, so I have to do this in stages.
But uh, yeah, so I think I can really improve this thing, get it running smooth and straight and better, and make it. I think make it look even better too. So yeah, that's where we're headed. So that's it for now. I've pulled it down as far as I'm going to at this stage. In the next video, we should be doing a bit of lathe work and uh, make some chips. So until then, yep, see you next time. Cheers.